Welcome back, dear listeners, to another episode of our motivational podcast. Today, Larry and I are diving deep into a game-changing book that has been taking the self-help world by storm. Atomic Habits, An Easy Proven Way to Build Good Habits, Break Bad Ones by James Clear. Larry, this book has been on your recommendation list for a while now. What makes it stand out for you? Oh, Susan, where do I begin? Atomic Habits is not just another book on habits. James Clear introduces a fresh perspective on habit formation and how tiny changes can lead to remarkable results. He seamlessly blends scientific research with relatable anecdotes, making it a compelling read. Absolutely. And the title itself, Atomic Habits, suggests something small yet powerful. It's this idea that small habits, when done consistently, can lead to exponential growth and change in our lives. Precisely. Clear makes a powerful analogy, comparing habits to the compound interest of self-improvement. Just as money multiplies over time with compound interest, the effects of our habits multiply as we repeat them. This concept resonated deeply with me because it emphasizes the long game, the power of consistency, and the impact of seemingly insignificant actions over time. That's a brilliant analogy. And James Clear doesn't just stop at theory. He provides actionable strategies to implement these habits. For instance, the four laws of behavior change. Can you touch upon that, Larry? Of course. The four laws of behavior change provide a framework to build good habits and eliminate bad ones. They are, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. Each law addresses a different aspect of habit formation and Clear provides practical tips on how to apply them in daily life. It's a testament to his deep understanding of human psychology and behavior. I also loved how he emphasizes the importance of environment and context in shaping our habits. It's not just about willpower. It's about designing an environment conducive to good habits. Spot on, Susan. Clear believes that if you want to make a habit a big part of your life, make the cues of that habit big in your environment. And that's just one of the many golden nuggets from the book. As we dive deeper into our discussion, We'll unpack more of these insights and delve into the transformative power of atomic habits. Larry, one of the sections that particularly caught my attention was the idea of identity-based habits. It's not just about what you want to achieve, but about who you want to become. Can you delve into that a bit more for our listeners? Absolutely. The concept of identity-based habits is groundbreaking. Instead of focusing solely on outcomes or processes, Clear emphasizes the importance of starting with who we want to be. For instance, it's not just about wanting to read more, but about becoming a reader. When our habits are aligned with our desired identity, they become more ingrained and natural. That's such a profound shift in perspective. Instead of saying, I'm going to run today, you say, I'm going to be a runner. It makes the action part of who you are, rather than just something you do. Precisely. And the beauty of this approach is that every action you take is a vote for the kind of person you wish to become. So even if you start small, like running for just five minutes, it still counts as a vote for being a runner. James Clear also touches upon the idea of habit stacking, which I found fascinating. It's about strategically adding new habits onto existing ones. How can our listeners apply that in their daily routines? Habit stacking is one of those practical strategies that can be easily integrated into one's life. Let's say you already have a habit of making a cup of coffee every morning. If you want to incorporate a habit of gratitude, you can stack it by saying three things you're grateful for every time you brew your coffee. The existing habit serves as a trigger for the new one. And it's these small, consistent actions that lead to significant, long-term results. Another compelling point Clear makes is about the plateau of latent potential. Many times, people give up because they don't see immediate results but the book emphasizes the importance of persistence and patience. Absolutely, Susan. It's like when you're heating an ice cube. At first, even as the temperature rises, you don't see any change. But once it reaches the melting point, there's a sudden transformation. Our habits often work the same way. The progress is invisible until a critical point. This understanding can help many stay on track even when they feel like they're not making headway. It's all about trusting the process and recognizing that every effort counts, no matter how small. As we dive further, we'll explore more about the compounding effect of habits and how they can truly reshape our lives. 
Larry, the idea of the environment playing a crucial role in habit formation was another enlightening aspect of atomic habits. James Clear states that making the cues of our habits more visible will increase the likelihood of us following through. What are your thoughts on this? Absolutely, Susan. Environment design is essential. If you want to make a habit a part of your life, you have to make its cues obvious in your surroundings. For instance, if you intend to play the guitar more often, placing it in the middle of your living room rather than tuck away in its case makes it more likely you'll pick it up and play. It's about reducing the resistance and making it easier for us to get started. It really brings to mind the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. By having those visual cues present, it's almost as if you're setting up little reminders or triggers throughout your day. Exactly. And it's not just about making the good habits more visible, but also about hiding or reducing exposure to the cues that lead to bad habit. If you're trying to eat healthier, for example, it might be a good idea to keep those chips and cookies in a less accessible cabinet and have fruits displayed prominently on your counter. I love that approach, not just adding, but also subtracting from our environment. Another concept Clear introduces is the idea of making habits attractive, thus increasing the odds of executing them. How can someone leverage this in real-life situations? This ties in with a principle from behavioral psychology called temptation bundling. It's about pairing an action you want to do with an action you need to do. Let's say you enjoy listening to certain podcasts or audiobooks. You can pair that with a habit you're trying to develop like going for a walk or a jog. Over time, you start associating the pleasure of listening with the act of walking, and it makes the entire process more appealing. That's a brilliant way to sort of hacks our brains into adopting better habits. And speaking of the mind, I was also struck by the emphasis on the role of community and culture in reinforcing habits. It's not just about individual actions, but also about the collective influence. So true. We often hear that we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with. If you're surrounded by individuals who prioritize health, fitness, reading, or any positive habit, you're more likely to mirror those behaviors. It's peer pressure used positively. Finding or creating a community that aligns with your desired habits can be a game changer. As we draw to the end of our discussion on Atomic Habits by James Clear, it's evident that building habits isn't just about willpower or big sweeping changes. It's about small, consistent adjustments that compound over time. The strategies mentioned in the book, from environment design to leveraging community, can truly make the process of adopting new habits more seamless and sustainable. Absolutely, Susan. Clear does a wonderful job emphasizing that success doesn't hinge on a single massive action, but rather on daily, minute decisions. He beautifully encapsulates the principle that habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. If there's one takeaway for our listeners, it's that by making tiny, one improvements every day, we can find ourselves in a radically better place a year from now. I couldn't have said it better, Larry. It's empowering to know that we have the tools and strategies at our disposal to create lasting change. For everyone listening, we hope this discussion inspires you to revisit your own habits and find ways to make them work for you. Remember, it's the small shifts that, over time, can lead to significant transformations. Thank you, Larry, for this insightful discussion. Thank you, Susan, and to all our listeners, keep striving, keep striving, keep improving, and remember to embrace the journey of continuous growth.